Eddie Chavez. Ruben Nava. And Jesse Romero. Jesus 911. Good morning. Good morning to you. Jesus 911 here, Eddie Chavez. And uh, my partner Jess Romero, who is uh, at an undisclosed location, will will keep that secret. <laughs> Jess, you're you're in a better part of the uh, of the uh, country right now, warmer part. How are you? I'm reporting for duty, sir. I'm 10-8. I'm reporting for duty, and I am here doing some intel uh, off the coast of the of the U.S. somewhere in an underground bunker, <laughs> preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen, brother. Amen. Jess, we got a couple of topics here today. We're going to revisit a couple of things, and then we're going to get into something that just came out. But uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about the uh, uh, about Pachamama. But we're going to before we do that, we're going to talk about uh, what are demons and why are they after us. And uh, so we're going to uh, do an article here. Get, get into let's an article. Jump right in. Yep. Yeah. So let's start it off. He says, uh, since the beginning of of humanity, demons have been hell bent on leading us to eternal damnation. Satan is not alone in his mission to destroy humanity. He is accompanied by demons, evil spirits whose primary mission is to disrupt the purpose of our lives and take away from God. Uh, take us or away. Take us away. Take us away from God. Uh, the Catechism of the Catholic Church explains this is three uh, ninety one and three ninety two explains that the Church teaches that Satan was at first a good angel made by God. The devil and other demons were indeed created naturally good by God. But they came; uh, they became evil by their own doing. Scripture speaks of a sin of these angels. Uh, this fall consists in the free choice of these created spirits who radically and irre- irrevocably rejected God and His reign. Just this is a good uh, a good thing to recall or remember because I've been asked several times by by uh, mediocre Catholics and and just Christians that uh, uh, well, did God God made the devil, didn't He? Yeah, and it just answered it right here. No, God made all the all the angels, all the good angels, and at a given point in time, when God, according to the fathers of the church and uh, some of the great minds like uh, Blessed uh, Catherine uh, Emmerich, uh, uh, one of the mystics who wrote about this as well, the uh, the demon, the the devil specifically Lucifer, all the angels were shown salvation history and stages and they rejected god's plan of the incarnation and also the uh, the honoring of the queen mother and so that was satan's rebellion according to the great minds of the catholic church but eddie here's a bible verse which actually tells us the sin of lucifer this this seraphim who rebelled against god it's in wisdom chapter 2 uh verse uh verse 20 21 and following it says this but by the envy of the devil, there it is, but by the, wisdom 221, but by the envy of the devil, death entered the world, and they who are in his possession experience it. This is the mm. only verse that I've seen where it talks about demonic possession. It's in wisdom chapter 2, verse 20 and 21. And here it says that the fall, uh, the sin of this uh, seraph, Lucifer, was the sin of envy. Envy is uh, one of the seven deadly sins. St. Thomas Aquinas uh, and St. Augustine said it was a sin of pride, so it was a combination of both of those. Jess, and we should uh, uh, explain a little bit here that uh, when it talks about these angels making irrevocable irrevocable, uh, choices, uh, you know, we have to understand that this is happening in eternity. This is happening in, in, uh, in, in God's time here and so the angels have free will choice like you and i do however when they make their choice because they exist in a different dimension their choices are eternal they can't they can't change those and the reason also is that is because they were given so much more information like for example you and i as human beings god hasn't showed us the future of the world he hasn't showed us salvation history none of this has been revealed to us you and i live by faith as the bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, we live by faith and not by sight. The angels, were they lived by sight. God showed them uh, salvation history in stages. So they saw what was going to happen. They even saw hell. They saw their final damnation for those who rebelled. And yet with their free will, these angels 
made an irrevocable decision to follow Lucifer in his rebellion. And by the way, angels and demons still have free will right now. Right now. Angels in heaven, demons in hell have free will. Angels on earth and demons on earth have free will. The, the only difference now is that because things are so clear to them right now for angels and demons, angels are completely at this point saturated and oriented toward goodness, beauty, and truth that all they want to do is the will of God. Demons are so saturated and so full with, so, so filled with pride and envy and hate that they're completely oriented towards that, uh, though they still have free will, but they don't want to change. That's their, that's their complete orientation because that's all they know at this point, and that's all they've accepted. So they have free will, just they don't exercise it because they're set. They've seen everything from beginning to end. They know their position, and they're sticking to it. Yeah, it's it's like, uh, I mean, it's like you throw a, a, a boulder down a, a mountain, okay? And the boulder starts going down faster and faster. I mean, theoretically speaking, I guess something can move the boulder, knock it out of its course, but it's so oriented towards going down and fast and hard, uh, the orientation is, uh, is, is, is pretty much, uh, again, that, it's irrevocable. Right. Though something can come, you know, lightning can hit it and knock it off its course, you know? Yes. Yes. Okay, very good. Let's, let's keep going here, Jess. It says, the book of Revelation in 12, 7, 9 uh, is seen to support this notion that Satan was not alone in his rebellion against God. Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels battled against the dragon. The dragon and its angels fought back, but they did not prevail, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. The huge dragon, the ancient serpent, uh, who is also called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world, was thrown down to the earth, and its angels were thrown down with it. That's Revelations 12, 7 through 9. Two points. The, yes. the, the, the devil and the fallen angels are here on planet Earth, okay? Are they in the moon? I don't know. Are they in Mars? I don't know. I, I know they're on planet Earth because the Bible says that. It reveals that. And what do they do? It tells us right there. What's the whole plan of Satan and, and the fallen angels? Deception. Is there deception upon uh, planet Earth right now? Yep, a lot of it comes through politics, by the way, and through uh, legislation and through false religions. That's the way that that's the way the devil operates on planet Earth is sp specifically through deception. Right, right. It says here, prior to these verses, the author writes how the dragon's tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. That's Revelation 12. This is often interpreted as referring to a third of the angels in heaven joined. Uh, in heaven who, who joined Satan's rebellion. It is generally believed that there is a vast number of angels in heaven, a number difficult for the human mind to fathom. With this in mind, the number of fallen angels cannot be thought uh, small, and this is one reason why Satan's influence is spread throughout the world. Revelation 12, 17 says this, Since the initial fall at the beginning of creation, Satan and his demons have had humans in their crosshairs. That's They're the, they're the point of of uh, focus for for them uh, the book of revelation again reveals how the dragon became angry with the woman and went off to wage war against the rest of her offspring those who keep god's commandments and bear witness to jesus just this very is, clear yeah very clear bible verse that uh mary has other children so protestants are half right the other children of mary are the ones who keep god's commandments and bear witness to jesus that's us okay she doesn't have any other uh, uterine children. She has spiritual children based on this verse right here. So that's a half truth. When they go, Mary got other children. I say, yeah, I'm one of her child. Yes. One of her ch that's why I wrote a book called Mama's Boy, because I'm one of Mary's kids, based on Revelation 12, 17. You strive to keep God's commandments, bear witness to Christ, you're one of Mary's children, period. And just we have to remember that the point of this, this verse is that the devil uh, waged began uh, to wage war against Mary and her children. So we're going to have a lot of issues when it comes to, for example, apparitions of the Blessed Virgin Mary. There's always going to be some kind of distraction. There's some kind of some kind of uh, 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 thing that, that the demons will do to try to distract humanity from understanding and perceiving that it was a legitimate uh, a legitimate apparition. I could name yeah, several, or, several of them. Or, or maybe even withholding stuff from an apparition. Yes. Uh, withholding information to the church. Uh, it says here, humans are the pearl of God's creation and Satan wants 
to dwell that he that all is in his power to destroy that pearl. This means tempting us to essentially destroy ourselves, making wrong choices that create a spirit of rebellion in our hearts. His end game is to have us fully reject God, join him in, in his eternal misery, hell. The good news is that demons do not have infinite power and are technically quite harmless to a soul in union with God. That means living in the state of grace. Okay, that's what I've been saying for 10 years. They can do nothing but try to frighten us while we can invoke God's power to cast them off of our lives. They are powerless when compared to the majesty and glory of God. Demons can certainly wreak havoc on our world, but only, here it is, here's the key, yep. if we cooperate with them. In truth, they are cowards separated from God by their foolish choice. In other words, what Flip Wilson, the, fu the funny uh, uh, entertainer, black entertainer, what he used to say years ago, the devil made me do it. That's not, that's not New Testament theology. That's not Catholic teaching. The devil can't make you do anything. He can only tempt you, and you have to cooperate with him in order to fall into sin. But yeah, but that's the end game of the devil is uh, for you to live in mortal sin, objective mortal sin, don't repent, don't have a conversion, and end up in hell. Eddie? Just it seems so so simple. It seems so simple. All we have to do is is not cooperate with the demons, and we're safe. They're harmless. They, uh, they can't harm us. But we as human beings have this thing called concupiscence, and we always tend towards sin. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jesus 911. We will uh, be back right after this break. Don't go away. We'll be right back. This is Jesse Romero. And I'm Terry Barber. From the Terry and Jesse Show. And we invite you to listen to the Holy Hour of Power, High Energy Catholic Radio. We're two Catholics with a PhD in common sense. We're on Monday through Friday on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. What we're going to give you is masculine Catholic teachings on the faith. You know, we say we're too inspired to be tired, we're too protected to be dejected, and we're too renewed to be subdued. Why? Because we believe in Jesus Christ and His Bride, the Church. And we will take each issue of the day and show you how the Catholic Church has the answer for our culture. What we really do is bring men back into the Catholic Church, which it's about time to do. We want men to be leaders in their Catholic faith so that they can bring their family to heaven. Our program is not right versus left. It's right versus wrong. And our program is where Catholicism and culture intersect. It's high energy Catholic radio. We're going to inspire you to fall deeper in love with Jesus Christ and his bride, the church. The Terry and Jesse show on the Virgin Most Powerful app. In Luke 7, Jesus said, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven her because she has been shown great love. According to St. John of the Cross, Christians should always remember that the value of their good works is not based on number and excellence. Their value is based on the love for God that prompts them to do the works. May we always be motivated by true love for God and not worry so much about what we do, but why we do it. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites the Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888 526 2151. Welcome back to Jesus 911. Eddie Chavez here. We're 108. John 316 are our call, is our call sign. Just uh, the next article we're going to get into it gives us a, a, a little bit of uh, credibility here because uh, Father Mitch Pacwa uh, talks a little bit about. Uh, uh, about idol worship. This is one of the ways that demons come after us. Idol worship at the Amazon Synod. 
And what he says is, we're not stupid. This is an <laughs> idol. So this is a good article. I'm, I want to uh, play a little bit of it, but not just yet. We're going to introduce the article first here. Uh, it says, uh, Father Mitch Paco had some strong words regarding the Amazon Synod. By the way, he's a Jesuit. And just That should be noted. He's, a, he's, a, he's right. from the same order as Pope Francis. Right. And, and uh, this is what he says. He says, uh, on his latest episode of Scripture and Tradition, the Jesuit priest and talk show host addressed a major scandal of Pachamama worship, worship at the Amazon Synod last month. I'd like to address the situation of the Pachama, Pachamama statues, he began. The introduction of the statues of the Pachamama into the Synod on the, on the Amazon is something that is a major scandal. We are forbidden to have idols. We are forbidden to worship other gods. And some officials tried a little dance of their own, saying, well, it's a symbol of fertility and motherhood. And what he says is, knock it off. We're not stupid. We're not. <laughs> this is an idol. So Father Paco has got it here. And I think this is a good time just to let's hear a couple minutes of uh, of uh, Father Paco's uh, 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 YouTube video here when it comes to Pachamama. Can we play well, that? The statues of Pachamama into the Synod on the Amazon is something that is a major scandal. We are forbidden to have idols. We are forbidden to worship other gods. And so you, some officials tried a little dance of their own, saying, well, it's a symbol of fertility and motherhood. Knock it off! <laughs> We're not stupid. We're not. This is an idol. And here's the fruit. You know, talk about wolves and sheep clothing and bad wow. fruit. The Bishop's Conference of Italy has a mission office. And they publish in there a prayer to the Mother of Earth of the Inca peoples, to Pachamama. And it quotes, this is what the prayer reads, Pachamama of these places, drink and eat as much as you like of these offerings, so that this land may be fruitful. Pachamama, good mother, be propitious. Stop! You're talking about making an offering to a goddess that the people of the Andes put higher than Jesus and his blessed mother. Jesus is the Son of God. God the Father, God the Holy Spirit are the only God, the one God in three persons. There is no other God. And that the, I, I mean, I suspect, knowing the way apparatchiks work in these offices and bureaus and uh, little groups, I'll bet the bishops of Italy didn't know that this was going on. I'll bet that. But there's some apparatchik in their mission office who said, oh, this is kind of cool. We sort of like with the Amazon. The kind of goofy, superficial, new age-like thinking that goes back to the 1970s. This is something that is unacceptable. And then to make it even worse, if it's not bad enough. Okay, we'll, we'll leave it you know, there. The this is pretty clear. All you yeah. got to do is, this is Baltimore Catechism 101. If you go to the first commandment, all you have to read it. I am the, I'm saying it off the top of my head. I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no strange gods before me. You shall not make any graven images of, it, of anything in heaven or on the earth and bow down and worship it. I mean, this is classic, the definition of idolatry that went on there. It, this is, and by the way, of the Ten Commandments, the worst commandment of all ten, in case you're wondering, according to the Catholic Church, is the first commandment. That's the worst one to break. Supplanting anything before God. The sin of idolatry is the worst commandment to break of all the other nine. Okay? That, is, that one is the, the capital commandment. That one is, 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 is the one that basically undergirds all evil. When you walk away from God and you superimpose another false idol in your life, this is the height 
of what we would call the violation of the first commandment. And I'll tell you, Eddie, what's interesting, today at Holy Mass, all these, whoever was involved in this, potch, and whoever supports this, the Italian bishops, those people that were there, I wonder what they thought today, because today's first reading went after idolatry. I wonder as, I mean, anybody who celebrated Mass today, any bishop, you know, Pope Francis, when he celebrated Mass and he read this, I wonder if this brought him back to what happened at the garden. Look at the first reading today. Wisdom 13, 1 to 9. It's all an idolatry. It says, all men were by nature foolish who were ignorance, who, who were in ignorance of God and who from the good things seen did not succeed in knowing him who is and from studying the works did not discern the artisan but either fire or wind or swift air or the circuit of the stars or the mighty water or the luminaries of heaven, the governors of the world, they considered gods, lowercase g. Now, if out of joy in their beauty, they thought them gods, lowercase g, let them know how far more excellent is the Lord than these. For the original source of beauty fashioned them or if they were struck by their might and energy, let them from these things realize how much more powerful is he who made them. For from the greatness and the beauty of created things, their original author, God, by analogy is seen. But yet, for these the blame is less. For they indeed have gone astray perhaps, though they seek God and wish to find him. For they search busily among his works... Pachimama, for example, but are distracted by what they see because the things seen are fair. But again, not even these are pardonable. For if they for if they so far succeeded in knowledge that they could speculate about the world, how did they not more quickly find its Lord? So all of wisdom chapter one, verse nine is saying, guys, all the things that are created out there, there's a creator. His name is God. Don't worship these things that are created Worship the one that created them. And in Psalm 19, anybody involved in this, I wonder what they, they probably had a stomach ache today. They had heartburn at Mass today as they read this. Psalm 19, which says, The heavens proclaim the glory of God, and the firmament declares His handiwork. Again, what declares the glory of God? Pachamama? Idols? No. The heavens declare the glory of God. And so, Eddie, today, I think the Holy Spirit send a fastball to anybody that celebrated Mass today and that went to Mass today. Just, it's funny you mentioned that because uh, Father Father Paco gives a little story beforehand, and this is what he talks about. He talks about that in 1970 in Peru, there was an earthquake that was a, a 7.9 uh, magnitude quake. It lasted 45 seconds, and uh, it, ki- it killed ne- nearly like 70,000 people. Now, this is what he said. That happened on the Feast of Corpus Christi, okay? What happened is uh, entire cities just uh, were, were covered by landslides, and uh, uh, they became cemeteries. They couldn't even get the bodies out of there. What he indicated was that, uh, and, and you, somebody can go to the Internet and just Google uh, uh, 1970 Peru earthquake. Look at some of the images, and there's an image there of a, an entire hillside just it's been decimated. It's just it's just crumbled. But at the very top of this of this mountain, there's a statue of Jesus Christ. And this is this is very powerful because he said uh, at the at the base of that uh, statue of Jesus Christ was going to uh, you know c- incorporate your 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 uh, your uh, catechesis on the. Uh, on the reading today, this is what the 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 uh, it said. This is what it said on the on the on that plaque. It said, "Such is the fate of those who wor- worship Pachamama instead of the true Christ." Just this is this is what you just described, and this happened in 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 reality. And this is something that um, we need to be concerned about because this was in a major church. Uh, that's that's why we're bringing it up. Eddie, Eddie, there's a Bible verse. It, you can't be any more clear. It's it's so simple, okay? It's it's. I mean, even a fourth or a third grader can understand this. Here it is, First John, chapter five, verse twenty-one. Look at it. Look what seven words. Here's what it says. Children, be on your guard against idols. Seven words, <laughs> children. Be on your guard 
against idols. 1 John chapter 5, verse 21. You don't need a PhD to understand that. You don't need uh, degrees in theology to understand that. That is basic. Nothing comes before God. And the fact is, the classic way that you demonstrate that you're worshiping something, especially back in the Old Testament, is you make an image of it, and then you bow down and start praying to that image, prostrating on, touching your head in front of it, and asking, again, uh, worshiping it, burning incense, and, and offering your prayers. That's classic idolatry in the Old Testament, and the New Testament says, hey, don't do that. Be on your guard against idols. Also, in the book of Revelation, it gives you eight sins. Eight sins that will prevent you from getting to heaven. Guess which, what, which one of the eight sins that prevents you from getting to heaven? <laughs> one, of the, one of the sins is, I just, Revelation 22, 15. Okay, here are eight sins that will prevent you from getting to heaven. What are one of the eight sins? Here it is. Idol worshipers. Idol worshipers. Revelation 22, 15. Idol worshipers will not get to heaven. Eddie, this is Old Testament. This is New Testament. You can't be more clear than this. Yes, it's funny. Father Paco also mentioned, if you listen to that entire clip, that uh, the church of uh, St. Maria de Trans Tra Transportina uh, is actually a church dedicated to Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And he mentioned that that uh, in 1 Kings 18, Mount Carmel is a mountain where the prophet Elijah destroyed the prophets of Baal. And the reality is, is that by destroying the prophets, he eliminated at that location uh, uh, a deity, Baal. And even the, a mother goddess of the Canaanite people was Asherah. And uh, I think just there's something probably even more, more deep than what we're talking about. The idol worship, this particular Pachamama was meant to replace the Virgin Mary because the church is actually the church of the Our Lady of Mount Carmel, and they're trying to replace the mother with a Pachamama idol statue. You're, you're right. I think you nailed it. By the way, the Bible verse I misspoke, it's Revelation 21, verse 8. Revelation 21, verse 8, it gives you eight sins that will prevent you from getting to heaven. Eight sins. One of the eight sins is idol worship. Revelation 21, 8. Eddie? Yeah, we'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Stay with us. Welcome to our January 11th, 2020 Spiritual Warfare Conference. Every year without fail, this is our most popular, well-attended event. This year's Spiritual Warfare Conference will host Adam Bly, a Catholic demonologist, and an auxiliary member of the International Association of Exorcists, along with Dr. Luis Sandoval, a psychiatrist who's part of the Healing, Deliverance, and Exorcism team for the Diocese of Orange. These two gentlemen bring tons of experience and expertise in the area of spiritual warfare. This is going to be a high-information Catholic seminar. I'll be there as well, sharing some riveting stories on the diabolical and liberation found through Jesus Christ from my best-selling book, The Devil in the City of Angels. Mark your calendars, come and join us, and meet other radio hosts from Jesus 911. Contrary to popular belief, spiritual warfare is not demon-centered. It's Christ-centered. Come join us and learn how to armor up and fight the good fight of faith. Catholics, wake up. Don't hit the snooze button. Join us at St. Christopher Catholic Church, 629 South Glendora Avenue, West Covina, California, on January 11, 2020. See you then. Strength and honor in Jesus' name. This is Terry Barber. I want to invite you to take advantage of having your funeral or your loved one's funeral at the Sacred Heart Chapel in downtown Covina. It's a 115-year-old church beautiful chapel and all you got to do is call me at 661-972-7872 and i'll personally make the arrangements with your mortuary to have your funeral or your loved one's funeral here at sacred heart chapel you won't regret it 661-972-7872 god love you
buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites the Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888-526-2151. Jesus 911, welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, make sure that uh, you check the uh, that one hour uh, turn it off, Anita. Talk uh, that one hour talk by uh, by Father Paqua. Ladies and gentlemen, we uh, we're going to go to the next topic here, which is uh, something that uh, that's so important because um, it's uh, really uh, something that should be done. And I'm glad that four exorcists urge a day of fasting, prayer, and reparation uh, on December 6th, coming up in uh, in a few weeks. Uh, so just let's get into that. It says the priests suge- these priests suggest a rosary and prayers to the Sacred Heart, as well as some form of penance such as fasting, abstinence, and other forms of mortification. It says uh, four exorcists have issued a joint statement uh, asking Catholics worldwide to dedicate December 6th as a day of fasting, prayer, and reparation for the purpose of driving out any diabolical influence within the church that has been gained as a result of recent events i think we know what we're talking they're talking about there yeah and i'll I'll tell you why this is so important because these priests in particular they know how serious this is because they encounter many of these demons uh from one session to another they know them by name and in fact it's it's funny but some of these guys have told me that uh you know from one month to another, the demon will say, oh, you again, you know, to the priest. Oh, oh it's you again. Uh, and so they know they know how dangerous idolatry is. They know that that completely opens up a human being to diabolical spiritual affliction. And so this is why they're super sensitive to what happened. And uh, yeah, they're keeping their names anonymous, obviously, because uh, there's just too many modernists and liberals in the church right now that... It, this point would try to crush their priesthood so they got to just keep this under wraps but i'm glad they put this out eddie yeah just i mean this is something that needs to be done and and i'm so happy that they came out and 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 urged this this day of prayer and reparation because um i'm telling you there are priests that know people but none of them know people like those who have treated somebody that's been afflicted by a demon and is dealing with that every day but, uh, I, I can tell you this, Eddie. I think I told you that last time on, on the Vatican, because I know people that were there. Right across the street from the, the Amazonian Synod, there was a big, beautiful church across the street from the Vatican where you had a dozen young Catholic priests there that were doing prayers of exorcism as the Synod was starting. They were doing prayers of exorcism over the Vatican. Many young Catholic priests in, fu- you know, fully, in, in their full priestly habits on their knees and so, yeah, there's no, they're not saying a lot, but trust me, uh, a lot of these good priests are, 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 are activated and doing prayers of reparation and exorcism for, this, for what happened here at the Vatican. And, you know, Jess, we should, uh, we should support that. And uh, let's go on with or, the article to give more information yeah. about it. So it says, the exorcists who have requested anonymity due to the sensitivity of their ministry cited a, uh, in a particular way the controversy that took place at the Pan Amazon Synod. Uh, when statues purportedly of Pachamama, a goddess worshipped by indigenous indigenous Andeans, were incorporated into various synod events. Um, These events bring home the reality that we are in spiritual warfare, they said in their statement, and that warfare is happening within the church itself. The full statement is as follows. It says, in light of recent, recent events regarding the Pachamama ritual in the Vatican Gardens, the subsequent procession of the idol into St. Peter's, as well as placing the idols uh, in St. Maria in Transportipontina Church, we are reminded of the words of St. Paul in 1 Corinthians 10.20. And this is what it says. Do I say what, uh, that what is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? 
or that the idol is anything, but the things which the heathen sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not, uh, uh, and I would not that you should be made partakers with the devils. It says in Psalm ninety-five, five, tell us that all the gods of the Gentiles are devils, but the Lord made the heavens. Uh, and then and there's the third uh, verse they talk about here, Genesis, uh, Ephesians six, where we all know it. Uh, it says our, our wrestling is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of this world of darkness, against the spirits of wickedness in the high places. These events bring home the reality that we are in spiritual warfare, and that spiritual warfare is happening within the church itself. Uh, yeah, yeah, Eddie, uh, this this is this is something that's so common, uh, and and people, it's all around us. It's all around us. For example, last night I was here in a parish. A, a lady walked up to me. Her eyes looked like she was on drugs. W a, the most wild look in her face that I've ever seen. I mean wild. And her face looked like it was stiff like stone. And then she goes, Jesse, I got to talk to you. I say, yeah, what is it? Uh, she says, uh, by the way, I've been uh, seen by father so-and-so and I'm possessed. And I just had to ask you some questions. Her face betrayed. She was in so much torment, and uh, and I and I told her about Liber Christu. Uh, she goes, "Oh, I'm in contact with them." Oh, yeah. She says, "But I, I, it, it's too hard. I just want somebody just to pray over me and take this away." She said, uh, "Father Christu, uh, Father Ripperger's medical pro protocol. It's too difficult. I, I can't pray. It's too hard. It, it hurts too much." And so I'm looking at a lady, Eddie that's been diagnosed as being possessed but she's saying oh pray uh three times a day oh pray the angelus oh go to weekly confess oh no that's all that stuff's too hard in other words eddie uh the, as as catholics getting into this stuff was probably kind of easy getting out of it's going to be very difficult 90 percent of the work is going to be done by the energumen 10% by the priest. And I'm just here telling you, anybody out there that's spiritually afflicted, you're in control of your destiny. A priest is going to be like the dentist or like the surgeon, but you got to walk over there and you got to hire him and you got to completely cooperate with what he's doing. And so, it, it, and, and also last night, somebody ran out. I started doing a, a, a prayer to Our Lady at the end and I started talking about the authority of, of Mary over the diabolical. And a guy said, Jess, when you started talking about Mary's power over the demon, a lady next to me started having a seizure. I pulled out my phone. I'm going to call up the paramedics. She's having a seizure. And then she gets up and just walks out real quick. He goes, when you started talking about Mary crushing the head of the serpent, this woman next to me started shaking like a vibrator. Again, it's all around us, Eddie. Uh, Catholics need to open up our eyes and wake up. And I'm glad these exorcists here are 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 just calling it out, and, and I'm glad they're also you know keeping themselves incognito because uh, we need these. I, a lot of these guys are young guys, uh, and we need them around for many many years. But the article says this: these four exorcists say we are therefore encouraging all Catholics who recognize the evil of the events to join us in a day of prayer and penance on December sixth for the purpose of driving out any diabolical influence within the church that has been gained as a result of these recent events, along with any other events. So here are the three things that the four exorcists are asking us to do. We're asking all of those who participate to do the following for this. Number one, say the rosary. They're saying start, starting on December 6th, okay? Okay. Number two, Take on some form of penance, such as fasting, abstinence, and other forms of mortification. Here's one, uh, simple. Pray the ro when you pray the rosary every day, pray it on your knees, okay? That's a form of penance, especially when you're my age in your late 50s, trust me, okay? <laughs> Number three, offer prayers to the Sacred Heart, and uh, uh, maybe Eddie can do this for the audience and start offering the prayers of reparation to the sacred heart of Jesus. These are the prayers and the re reparation prayers uh, that these exorcists are asking all of us to do once we start this on December 6th. Eddie? Yeah, definitely, Jess, definitely. Um, 
Uh, yeah, so so just, you know, I, I was thinking about what you said about this woman that approached you, and, and we have a similar situation that's that's also within the church. We have a situation with uh, uh, catechists at a confirmation, and uh, one of these catechists uh, uh, the other day took us on uh, uh, verbally, and she wanted to, to discuss uh, uh, the movie Unplanned, and she described it. In her language, I recognize there's an issue with this young lady. It's kind of same look in her eyes, et cetera, et cetera. And she said, uh, "There's the this, this this movie is propaganda." And as she spoke, wow. as she spoke, wow. we started to understand that she did have uh, some issue. Uh, there's some there's some other issues that this individual is dealing with, and she decided to take us on right before class. Uh, last uh, last uh, Wednesday. So the reality is, we are dealing with this just from old to new, different levels of affliction. And so, uh, yeah, I agree with you, Jess. This is something that has to be done. Uh, this has to be done here. Uh, this uh, day of reparation, prayer and sacrifice. So yeah, we could we could go through the prayers here, Jess. Um, very very quickly yeah uh, you know let's do it at the fourth segment eddie go through the okay. prayer let me just let me just define what is reparation for catholics many some people are saying well what is this i've never heard this okay R- reparation is simply think about the word repair the damage okay there's been an offense against god the offense has been blasphemy the offense has been idolatry and so as catholics in our theology in fact, if, you, if people are saying, where do you guys get this from? It's actually from Colossians 1.24, okay? This is what's called uh, doing reparation or reparation prayer. It's right here in the Bible, Colossians 1.24, okay? St. Paul writes the following. And remember, St. Paul understands that he's totally united to Jesus. He's part of the body of Christ. That's why he can write this. If St. Paul wasn't part of the body of Christ, he wouldn't be writing this. He says... Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ on behalf of his body, which is the church. So St. Paul is saying here, here's the theology. Christ is the head, Colossians 1.18. We are the baptized, we're the body of Christ. Mary, if you want to get uh, St. Louis de Montfort, she's the neck of the body. Well, Jesus suffered That means all of us have to suffer. Jesus Christ was risen and glorified. We will all rise and be glorified if we die in a state of grace. St. Paul is saying that we suffer to make up what's lacking in the sufferings of Christ. What's lacking in the sufferings of Christ? Nothing. The only thing lacking in the sufferings of Christ is the mystical body has to suffer. That's you and I. We have to enter into, into the sufferings of Christ so that we can be saved. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this is Jesse Romero. Join me on a pilgrimage of faith and discovery to Poland for the 100th year anniversary of the birth of St. John Paul II in May of 2020. Together we'll experience the faith, beauty, and culture of Poland and become imbibed with the spirit of John Paul II. We'll visit the town of Wadowice, where John Paul was born, and the city of Krakow, where he was ordained and later became bishop. We'll also travel to Jasnogora and visit Our Lady of Czestochowa, and we'll have a chance to venerate the original image of the merciful Jesus at St. Faustina's convent and the city that St. Maximilian Kolbe built for the Immaculata. Finally, we'll pay a visit to Auschwitz, where St. Maximilian Kolbe was martyred. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to worship and discover your own faith at places where St. John Paul II grew in his own love for our Lord. For more information or how to join this pilgrimage, visit my website at jesseromero.com. In 1 Corinthians 13, 13, St. Paul says, So there abide faith, hope, and love, these three. According to St. Ignatius of Antioch, faith is the beginning and love is the end. And God is the two of them brought into unity. Then comes everything else that makes up a Christian. May God grant that we may attain all the virtues that make for authentic followers of His Son.
buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites the Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888-526-2151. Jesus 911, we're back. Jess, we're going to uh, talk a little bit now about the uh, about the actual reparation prayers, right? Is that what uh, yeah, we should do? Yeah, Eddie, it, it's, it's just simple, but, but just... Reparation, it's in Colossians 124. It simply means that there's been some damage done, okay? An offense against divine justice. Now, obviously, we believe as Catholic Christians that Jesus made the ultimate act of reparation on Calvary. But the fathers of the church also say that we, as part of the mystical body of Christ, we also have to repair the damage for the sins that we've committed in our lives, uh, uh, the lives of our families, the lives of our friends, and even in our society. In other words, we have to repair the harm that's been inflicted upon divine justice, and that's called reparation prayers. Because simple justice, as St. Thomas Aquinas says, requires reparation. It requires justice. And so prayers of reparation, it's not that Jesus Christ his actions on Calvary were not strong enough or sufficient. Absolutely. They're so strong that now Jesus Christ has poured his grace into us so we can cooperate with Christ and offer acts of reparation in our own bodies because we're part of the body of Christ. And so we actually participate in, in, in repairing some of the spiritual damage that we've done or that people in our church have done. That's what we're doing. In other words, you break somebody's window and somebody says, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Smith, I'm 10 years old. I don't have a job. I, 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 can't, I can't pay for the window, but I'm very sorry for breaking your window. Okay, Mr. Smith says, you're forgiven, but I need to talk to your parents. Why? Well, I'm sorry. Well, somebody has to pay for the window. Mom and dad come and they're going to write a check for the window. They didn't break it. Somebody, divine justice requires that somebody provide satisfaction. And this is what these exorcists are calling us to. I mean, this is even in confession. You go to confession, guess what? You're given a penance. What's that? That's called the theology of satisfaction or the theology of reparation for your sins. But now we're doing this on a macro level by the, the, the three things that the exorcists have called us to for this blasphemy and idolatry that's occurred on the, on the church grounds of, of the headquarters. Yes, you know, that's why it's so important for us to remember that that reparation has to do right now specifically with this what we're talking about with these priests, these four exorcists, is is something specific that was done uh, at the Pan Amazon uh, Synod. However, normally when we go to confession, when we 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 uh, participate in certain prayers, we have to understand that there's reparation to be done in our own family lines, Jess. In our own family lines, there has to be something that that we do that can improve somebody's uh, ultimate destination. Because we know that many of us, probably most of us, will have to spend some time in purgation, and therefore, uh, the attachment that some of our relatives had uh, in sin. Uh, has to be uh, alleviated, some of which has to do with our prayers, our sacrifices. And so we should remember that um, even even with things that are more personal than what we're talking about with these with these. Uh, yeah, and, and the theology is in Colossians 1.24, in case you're wondering, where the heck do we get this stuff from? It's in the Bible. Remember, you're part of the body of Christ. And St. Augustine says, just like Jesus died, you will die. Just like Jesus rose, you will rise. Just like Jesus ascended into heaven, you will also ascend. Of course, you know, in, in, uh, by divine permission and if you die in a state of grace. But the fact of the matter is, everything that happened to Jesus will happen to the mystical body of Christ if you follow and die in a state of grace. 
Justin, this is a, this is a harsh reality for a lot of people, especially those those Catholics that are just coming around, just hearing about the gospel, coming back to the church. Is that yeah, part of our church, part of what we have to do to be to to be accepted into heaven to for God to give us His divine grace to allow us to get there is 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 to suffer. We have to suffer because the head of the body suffers. And that's a harsh reality sometimes for us because it's nice just right now, even at our age, you know, we're, we're okay. We're getting along, but then you find yourself in the emergency room, like you and I both had in the last year. And you start thinking, is this it? Is, is this what I'm called is how I'm called to get to heaven through this suffering. And so, you know, it's nice to, 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 to talk about it, but when you live it, it's difficult and we have to learn how to do that and how to accept it. Yep. All right, Eddie, what's it? Give us an act of consecration to the human race, to the sacred heart of Jesus, that these four exorcists are calling us to start praying on December 6th. Yeah, this is one of the uh, prayers that they're talking about. It says, most sweet Jesus, redeemer of the human race, look down upon us humbly prostrate before thy altar. We are thine and thine we wish to be, but to be more surely united with thee. Behold, each one of us freely consecrates himself today to the, thy most sacred heart. Many indeed have never known thee. Many too, despising thy precepts, have rejected thee. Have mercy on them all, most merciful Jesus, and draw them to thy sacred heart. Be thou king, O Lord, not only of the faithful who have never forsaken thee, but also of the prodigal children who have abandoned thee, grant that they may quickly return to their father's house, lest they die of wretchedness and anger, and hunger. Excuse me. Be thou king of those who are deceived by erroneous opinions or whom discord keeps aloof. Call them back to the harbor of truth and unity of faith, so that soon there may be but one flock and one shepherd. Be thou king of all those who are still involved in the darkness of idolatry or Islamism. Refuse not to draw wow. not to draw them all wow. into the light and kingdom of God. Turn thine eyes of mercy toward the children of that uh, race. Once thy chosen people of old, they called down upon themselves the blood of the Savior. May it now descend upon them uh, a layer of of redemptive, uh, redemption and life. Grant, O Lord, to thy church assurance of freedom and immunity from harm. Give peace and order to all nations and make the earth resound from pole to pole with one cry. Praise to the divine heart that wrought our salvation. To it be glory and honor forever. Amen. Just Here's one thing I just want to say about this prayer. Yeah. Uh, not, not, to, not to be negative or anything, but this is a pre-Vatican II prayer. You can just tell from the theology there. Last night, the audience was asking me, Jess, especially some, a lot of the older people that were older than me, they were saying, we've noticed that a lot of our prayers in the church have changed. Uh, they've been redacted. I, yeah, this is a classic example. Eddie, you're not going to see this in any Catholic parish right now after Mass where the priest is going to say, okay, we're going to say this prayer, this act of consecration to the human race to the sacred heart of Jesus, unless you go to an FSSP church or, or, a, or, 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 or a Latin mass parish, there's nobody that's going to say, be thou king of all those who are still involved in the darkness of idolatry or of Islamism. I defy you to find me one parish that will say that right now after mass led by the priest. That's not going to happen. Islamism, are you kidding me? You, have you read the catechism on Islam? Okay. It's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, I'm just saying these... And this was done by design. I'm not going negative here. I just want to say the modernists did this by design. All you got to do, go on the internet and type in, for example, the old baptismal rite, pre-1965, pre pre and then type in the, the baptismal right now and compare the prayers. And you tell me if this was, a, if all the, the exorcisms that were in the old rite, three exorcism prayers, if they were not taken out by design and watered down, that's what they've done to all of our prayers. And this is why we're at, we're at right now. And I tell, I tell Catholics, get these old prayer books and read these old prayers. Incorporate these old prayers, the traditions of the church. Pray the prayers that Father uh, uh, Chad Ripperger and his team of exorcists have written, Auxilium Christianorum. These prayers are rich with the theology of healing and deliverance. And unfortunately, a lot of this has been taken out in, in the modern church. Again, you're just not, I'm reading this prayer. I'm like, wow. Yeah. 
the idolatry of Islamism. <laughs> That's what I've believed all my life. But I, I, I find it hard for people to agree with me. They're saying, what are you talking about? Read the catechism, Jess. Eddie, yeah, yeah uh, Jess. Go yeah, ahead, take it away. Yeah, it's true. It's because uh, we just don't hear those anymore. This is, you know, it's always best to go back to the days of old, Jess. It always is. I mean, you know, whatever we were talking about. Uh, there's another prayer here. I'll, we'll, we'll let the, we'll let the people uh, look yeah, at those it, yeah. and, and read them. But this is another beautiful prayer, similar to the one we just read, and it's called the Act of Reparation to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And this is this is the the, the heart of what we're doing. We're, we're making reparation to the Sacred Heart of Jesus for the sins of the church, especially just in the hierarchy, in those cardinals and bishops who have misled us, maybe not intentionally, we're giving them the benefit of the doubt here, maybe not intentionally, but regardless, they've allowed this to occur with the, the, the watering down of, of the prayers. Why, Jess? Why? Just because they want to have some uh, uh, a public softness. They want to they wanna tread lightly. But when it comes down to, to the latter times, like I believe we're in today, we don't need to be lighter, Jess. We need to be more harsh. We need to be more direct. We need to be more in tune with what Jesus is teaching us, and this is how we're going to yeah. do it. Yeah, we need to be Catholic and not be ashamed to be Catholic. And I'll tell you why. The reason the world is in such chaos right now is because the church is in chaos. Because the church is the moral conscience of government. The, the church is the moral conscience of the human race. And so when the church, the church is supposed to operate like a lighthouse uh, to keep the ships from crashing into the rocks. Well, when the lighthouse, when the light is dim. Or when you got bad people operating the lighthouse, uh, you're going to have chaos out there in the seas, out there in the oceans. There's going to be a lot of boats crashing up against the rocks. And uh, this is why St. Peter says in the Bible, in 1 Peter chapter 4, he says, judgment always begins first in the household of God. In other words, he's saying, when God judges the world, you know who he's going to judge first? The Catholic Church. Why? Because the Catholic Church is the pillar and foundation of truth. The Catholic Church is supposed to be the moral compass of the human race. And in many quarters of the church, we have bad shepherds that are not doing that, Eddie. God help us. Justin, why, why is it that, that elderly men that have studied, that know theology, that, that know the dogmas of the church, are the ones who are, are, seem to be less likely to give us these type of, of prayers, this type of leadership? This is what's lacking in the church today. We have to pray for it every day, but especially, ladies and gentlemen, on December 6th, which these four exorcists are calling. Jess, you're going to leave your disclosed, uh, undisclosed bunker right now, right? Uh, or soon? So uh, Yeah, I'm, uh, tomorrow I'll be heading back to Phoenix, Arizona. All right, man. Uh, all right, Daddy. God Good bless. Show. Thank you, Jess. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, you thank you for being with us today. Jesus 911. Stay tuned for uh, the Sensei, G uh, Gary Mashuda on Hands On Apologetics. Uh, thank you. It's always a pleasure to be with you. This concludes uh, Jesus 9-1 for this week. We'll be back next week with more exciting topics and uh, and things to uh, ponder. God bless you. Quis ut Deus. St. Michael the Archangel. Pray for us. Thank you. St. Faustina's Prayer for Priests O oh my Jesus, I beg thee on behalf of the whole Church, grant it love and the light of thy Spirit, and give power to the words of priests, so that hardened hearts might be brought to repentance and return to thee, O Lord. Lord, give us holy priests. Thou thyself maintain them in holiness. O oh, divine and great High Priest, May the power of thy mercy accompany them everywhere and protect them from the devil's traps and snares, which are continually being set for the souls of priests. May the power of thy mercy, O Lord, shatter and bring to naught all that might tarnish the sanctity of priests. For thou canst do all things. Amen. Virgin Most Powerful, pray for us.